Now, this March will mark two years since the wanted's Tom Parker died after being diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumour. Since his death, his wife Kelsey has been navigating grief whilst raising their two young children and she's documented her experience in her book With and Without You. Uh, Kelsey joins us now alongside relationship expert Paul Carrick Brunson. It's lovely to have you both here. Thank you so much. Um, Kelsey, you know, it's never easy and they say time's a healer, all of those things. Um, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Um, how are you all doing? Certainly Christmas is always a very difficult time for anyone that's suffered loss, mm. particularly with two small children. Yeah. Um, how, how did it go? How did you, you know manage what? Christmas it? was really hard this year. The first year, I think I had put a barrier up and I think I was in like a bit of a bubble and... Shock still, I guess. Yeah, I was in there. shock and... Yeah, this year hit me really hard. It was so much harder. So I booked to, to go on holiday on Boxing Day and I just went with the kids and my family and it was the best thing I could have done, really. Yeah, just changing the yeah. norm, I suppose, and yeah. creating new... And, and Tom loved Christmas. So I think for us, and you know, my kids are three and four, they, they're, they're getting to know what Christmas is. And Aurelia was actually a little bit like scared this year. She was like, what if I hear him say ho, ho, ho? And <laughs> she wanted to get in bed with me. And it's things like that, because Tom would have really loved that about mm. her. So, you know, it's, everything's just bittersweet. I always talk about bittersweet and that is, I feel like my life, life for the last two years has been so bittersweet. Yeah. Um, and you. you they were talking and you've been incredibly good at speaking up and I'm sure you have your moments where you don't want to but you have managed to share a, a lot of your, your grieving story as you've described it before Kelsey and you find um, a great sort of positivity out of that and I think it's been quite cathartic certainly right, right in the book you felt yeah. better with every page that you wrote. Yeah the book was therapy for me it's the best thing I could have done I needed it um, to come to terms with everything that had happened to me. And, you know, even when Tom got ill, it was like, what do we do? We were the positive Parkers and we pushed through it. And every day we were up, we were doing stuff and we were proactive. And I think I was on the go. I was researching at, like, till three o'clock in the morning, going to bed, getting up with my kids. I don't know how I actually did it, but writing the book was a reflection for me too. And also for me to reflect on the time that me and Tom had together yeah. and how we were best friends, soulmates, and, you know, just everything. Mm -hmm. And what we achieved together. Yeah. Like we achieved so much in 13 years. Absolutely. And two beautiful children yes. and everything else. But you did explain to your, your Instagram followers earlier this month that you felt now was the time to take the wedding ring off. And it's a very difficult decision. And, and I'll ask your opinion in just a second, Paul, because it's a very personal decision. Yes. Um, why, why did you feel like maybe now was the time? I just think, um, for me... I don't actually know. I just felt this year was the time that I needed to take the wedding ring off and to, you know, in I am married to Tom, but not in this lifetime. He's just, he's not here. He doesn't. He's not here anymore, is he? So I'm not actually married to anyone, and it just felt that I needed to. I don't know. I'm looking down at it. I'm remembering the happy times we had, but then also that he's not here with me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I feel like I'm a lot clearer this year. And I need to focus on myself and my children and just moving forward. And I feel like that, taking that off, is a symbol, but it it's, needs to be in a box now. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and that will resonate, I'm sure, with so many people, Paul, going through a similar situation as Kelsey. Because it is, like I said, it's a very personal decision and it's very difficult to navigate your way what the, th through the next phase of life. How does that look? How do you approach it? And... Yeah, it's it's, and that's actually very brave of you to to explain it the way you did. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you, you know, I know uh, you have faced some backlash and some trolling, but I want to say that Kelsey is a per, is the perfect example of how you move through grief and how you do it in an emotionally healthy way. You know, what's interesting about the ring is that a lot of people say the ring is love, and that's mm -hmm. the reason why you don't want to take it off. Never take it off. But you know what? The ring is a symbol yeah. of love. And symbols, we assign our own meaning to symbols based on culture, based on our mm -hmm. personal experiences. Some people keep the ring on forever, right? Some people remove it immediately. You decide it is a personal opinion and that's exactly what you've done. And for that, and, I applaud you. And that's what I loved reading the comments when I did share that with everyone, that everyone's journey is so different. Yes. You know, some people did take it off straight away and I was like, oh, I couldn't have done it. Because actually Tom placed, when he was in the hospice, he placed his wedding ring on my finger. Mm -hmm. So for me, I felt like, oh, I've got to keep it on. But now's the time. It just feels right for me and I don't know what it is. And with me, I just go with what's right 
for me. Yes, and, and that's how you honor yourself, by honoring your feelings, and that's exactly what you've done. And again, there's no time frame, is there, Paul, in terms of even moving on? I mean, you, you are open to, like I say, this next phase, potentially finding love again, Kelsey. You're not shutting any doors at this point at all. You don't know what you want, really. It's just yeah. a key, you are, you're taking also, it day I am by 33. day. But, yeah. I'm 33. Like, yeah. I, I had such an amazing relationship with Tom, and we were together, I was 19 when I met him, and we had such an amazing bond but I am 33 mm -hmm. and I have two children. And what yes. advice would you give them, Paul, but to someone I, I, feeling that way? You know what's so interesting about this is that a lot of people say, okay, you move on, you move on. You don't move on from someone who you've loved, mm -hmm. never. You move on with, they stay with you. Their memories stay with you and they help to guide you to find a new love, right? It'll be a different love, but a new love. One of the first things I say is you have to embrace your grief journey. And this is exactly what you've done. One of the best ways to do this is to journal or to write a book, right? And that's what you do because that way you could experience all of those emotions. Another thing is to rediscover yourself, right? Finding new hobbies, new activities. That helps to identify who you are. And then you get a sense of self and you need to bring that to your new relationship because that's how you create boundaries. And, and you know what? I do feel like I lost myself because I became Tom's carer when he became became ill, it was all about Tom, then Tom passed away, then who did it become about? My children. Right. And that's why I feel like this year that it, I've got to put myself first. Yes. Like it needs to be about me. I've given so much to the people I love, but I need to start loving myself a little bit more. Yes, and then also honoring all of those emotions. So a big question comes up and that is, okay, I'm on a date. Now what do I do? Do I talk about, oh, right, yeah. what, what do I do, right? And what I always say is that if you are thinking about it, that's a feeling. Honor your feeling by talking about it. That's how you honor yourself. And actually then it's interesting, the person that you could potentially be on the date with, how they manage what you've been through. You know, if you're, if you're suddenly on a date with someone who is a widow, yeah. how, how, they, how they make you feel comfortable in their company because you would want to make you feel that you can talk about Tom and that it is a comfortable place to do that. Yes. So it takes a special person as well, doesn't it? Yeah. It does, it takes a person. So the person that you are going to be with next is going to be a person who's sensitive, but most importantly, emotionally open mm -hmm. because they need to be able to be vulnerable, share their emotions in order for you to feel safe to share yours. And you must, you, you, we're talking about being busy and finding a new version of you, Kelsey, which, which you have done. I mean, you're incredibly busy. You're teaching, you're very spiritual. Yeah. You've got your holistic retreats. You've got lots going on right now, which I guess is just a blessing. It's been a wonderful uh, yeah. distraction and a way to get yourself back on A distraction, track. but I'm loving everything I'm doing. And I feel like Tom has given me these opportunities mm -hmm. and I feel like I need to seize every, every opportunity. And you said to me, you're so busy, but everything I do, like coming on here, talking to you, like, I'm loving everything that I'm doing. I'm seizing every opportunity and why not? Because Tom has taught us you have one life. Yes. Very you much. have to live it to the full. And you want your children to see that. Yeah. They want, and you I know, want you them want to be them proud to see of the me. best version yeah. of you, if possible, you know, in amongst the, the sadness that of course you've all felt. Um, Kelsey, you are remarkable. The book With and Without You was out last September and it's just a very honest account of, of your life really. And what the special bond that you had with Tom, like you say, he was your soulmate and yeah, that never was. ever disappears, Paul. Never. never. Never um, whatsoever, he will be with you forever and he will help to guide you to find a different love. And I do feel him with me mm -hmm. all the time. Yes. And the kids, like I do feel his presence with me. Yeah, as it should be. Thank you so much, Thank Kelsey. You. Thank you, good luck with everything. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank the you. words of wisdom Thank you. as always. Yes.